Ike Bloom was an associate of Big Jim Colosimo and owner of some of the city's most popular nightclubs such as Midnight Frolics and Freiburgs, a well-known dance hall in the Levy Vice District. Born Isaac Jittleson Bloom in Poland, he arrived in Chicago in 1885 when he was 20 years old with his brother, who would manage his clubs and his sister Yetta. The brothers were trained to be tailors. He ran numerous social clubs after opening the popular Freiburg's Dance Hall at 18 East 22nd Street in 1895. The hall had originally been a German social club before the neighborhood slipped into becoming a notorious red light district. Bloom insisted upon outward respectability and propriety. The young women, meaning prostitutes and taxi dancers, who frequented the place were compelled to behave with the utmost outward decorum. Intoxication was punished with expulsion from the hall and modern styles of dancing which he determined to be racy were forbidden. Under the surface, the hall did a thriving business on the drinks sold to the girls, a percentage of the money paid to nearby hotels, and a share of the profits of tradesmen who supplied the expensive costumes which the young women were compelled to wear. Although Freiburg's closed in 1914, it was later reopened during Prohibition and renamed Midnight Frolics during Prohibition. Known as King of the Brothels, he was involved in white slavery as well as prostitution as a partner with Colosimo and others in the Everly Club following its grand opening in 1911. Bloom, as the Chicago Tribune reported, was active Chicago's old red light district when Al Capone, Jack Guzik, and other vice lords of the future were waiters or runners. Bloom, who was reckoned a power in politics when mayors were to be made and unmade, he and his brother-in-law Sol Friedman were insured a monopoly on the sale of bolt whiskey in the levee by Alderman Bathhouse John Coughlin and Mike Hinky Dinkina in exchange for making collections for the two aldermen. In 1920, the license for his and Colosimo's restaurants were temporarily revoked during the fall elections by Mayor Thompson when it was discovered the two were supporting the Democratic nominee for the office of state's attorney. Bloom refused to abide by the one o'clock closing time and was arrested later bringing an injunction against the city. Attorneys for Bloom and Colosimo successfully appealed the mayor's decision. Following Colosimo's death, Bloom would give the eulogy at his funeral which was attended by more than 5,000 people. He would later become involved with John Torrio and Al Capone, with Capone later owning 25% of the Midnight Frolics, the club in which comedian Joe E. Lewis first began his career in 1926. The police crackdowns became more frequent and the profits at the Midnight Frolics grew smaller until in 1924 Bloom announced that he was retiring. He later opened a downtown cabaret in Randolph Street, known as the Deauville, but was in constant trouble with prohibition enforcement agents. The Deauville Cafe was held up by two gunmen who escaped with over $2,000 and a diamond ring worth $1,000 on the afternoon of January 30, 1926. Although few were present during the robbery, Samuel Cole, then owner of the Southern and Astor Hotels, was one of the robbery victims. Active in local politics, he eventually became head of the First Ward Democratic Organization before his death on December 15, 1930, in his home at 3520 Sheridan Road, following a two-year illness that caused him to suffer through several amputations. According to the newspapers, he more than probably died broke. 